everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Nine. fantasy movies that I believe are highly, highly underrated and deserve more attention. There are of course dozens and dozens of fantasy movies that could have made this list, so I have chosen some of my personal favorites. My goal today is to hopefully get some of you to give some of these movies a chance if you haven't already, and of course in the comments down below, please let me know some of your most favorite underrated fantasy films. But before we move on with the list, a word from a friendly sponsor face and that is Raid Shadow Legends. Once again, we are taking a look at Raid Shadow Legends, the brand new collection RPG game with more than 10 million players worldwide in less than six months. This free to play game offers over 400 unique champions to collect, orcs, knights, undead, elves, and loads more. In Raid, you have the ability to personally customize your champions, choosing their artifacts and creating a unique mastery build for each one of them. And the highly anticipated new Faction Wars feature is now live. Raid is growing super fast with already over 300,000 reviews and an almost perfect score in the Play Store. And you can get yourself a new daily login reward for the first 90 days in game. So check out that link in my description below to get started and receive 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. So thank you so much to Raid Shadow Legends and on with the list. Number nine. Return to Oz. This super creepy, nightmare-inducing fantasy follows the continuing story of Dorothy Gale after the events of The Wizard of Oz. But Dorothy ain't getting a good night's sleep lately and still likes to talk about Oz. So naturally, let's shock it out of her. Dorothy is saved from a psychiatric facility and is somehow called back to Oz, which is in dire need of her help from the Gnome King and a vain witch. This was the Yellow Brick Road. Filled with odd and unique characters like TikTok, Jack, and the Wheelers, interesting landscapes and sets, if you thought The Wizard of Oz was weird, Return to Oz definitely kicks it up a notch. This movie stars Feruza Balk. In one of her first major roles, and perhaps the creepiness of this movie was the catalyst for her ever odd character roles. Yeah, I just got out of jail. I heard you were playing football. Number eight, the never ending story. Part two, the next chapter. We all know that the original 1984 never ending story part one was an absolute classic and recognized by many to be a staple in the fantasy genre. Based on the 1979 German fantasy novel, not only did it produce one of the greatest theme songs of all time, it also sparked a second and third installment, both of which get pooed on when it comes to reviews. Get your motor running. But part two, the next chapter, I feel was an absolute treat to watch and held true to the fantasy world of Fantasia, keeping the spirit of the franchise alive. We follow the continuing adventures of Bastion Balthazar Bucks, played by the late Jonathan Brandis, who delivers a stellar and girly heartthrob performance. Is there no one with the courage to stand up with me against the giants? Bastion, who is having trouble with his father as well as conquering his fears, is called once again to the magical land of Fantasia through the antique book. There he sees both old faces and new, like an evil sorceress who hopes to seize Fantasia for herself with the power of the emptiness. Chapter 2 may have a weak plot, but the acting characters and sets I believe were brilliant and don't deserve such poor reviews. If you're gonna poop on this franchise in any way, please focus all your pooping on part 3. <laughs> Empress, you said no cheap head jokes. So sue me. <laughs> Number seven, The Last Unicorn. This 1982 Japanese American animated delight follows the tale of the last unicorn, who sets out on a journey to discover why she is indeed the last unicorn and find the others. All I want to know is if you've seen other unicorns like me somewhere in the world. She makes a few friends along the way, like Schmendrick the Magician, and she sets her eyes on the kingdom of King Haggard, who is obsessed with attempting to capture the world's unicorns. With a beautiful animation style, cool creatures, great voice cast, and an absolutely gorgeous soundtrack featuring the group America, I'm alive! If you weren't obsessed with unicorns before, you will now. Produced and directed by Rankin and Bass, they have pumped out some awesome content like the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Christmas Special, The Flight of Dragons, and our number six pick. Number six, The Hobbit. Again from Rankin and Bass, we have the 1977 animated adaptation of The Hobbit. No pipe, not even a pocket handkerchief. 
How can one survive? Where the quiet and polite hobbit Bilbo Baggins is approached by a wizard and a group of dwarves who, with Bilbo's help, hope to reclaim their homeland from Smaug the Dragon. There were also other animated adaptations of Tolkien's epic fantasy like The Lord of the Rings 1978 and The Return of the King 1980, both of which are absolutely awesome and Return of the King is also by Rankin and Bass. But of the three, The Hobbit is my favorite and a staple in my bedtime routine if I'm having a little hard time sleeping. The voice actors are absolutely phenomenal, the animation may be a little frightening at times, but because it follows the original 1937 novel so closely, it almost feels like you're reading along. Number 5. Dinotopia. Ah, Dinotopia, a gem in the dinosaur realm. Dinotopia is based on a series of illustrated fantasy books first published in 1992. It centers around the isolated island of Dinotopia, which is inhabited by shipwrecked humans and intelligent dinosaurs who have learned to peacefully coexist together. No, no, it's perfectly all right. It was completely my fault. This dinosaur can talk. A four hour, three episode live action TV miniseries was created and produced by Walt Disney. Disney Television and Hallmark Entertainment. It really brought the story to life with beautiful sets, costumes, and effects. But this three-parter is not to be confused with the 2002 TV series, which was a continuation of the three-episode miniseries. Set in part as a sort of sequel to the books, seeing some old faces and new, we follow half-brothers Carl and David as they navigate their way through the unbelievable land of Dinotopia in an effort to find their way back home following a plane crash. And yes, before he was worried about prison, as Michael from Prison Break, Wentworth Miller, was lost in the land of Dinotopia. Who knew? Number 4. The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad Some of my favorite fantasy films come from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Classic fantasy movies are amazing. They generally have fantastic sets, great old-school claymation effects, phenomenal music scores, and an epic feel to them. Some examples are Atlantis, The Lost Continent, Jason and the Argonauts, One Million Years BC, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and much more. I have so many favorites, but one of my all-time favorites is the old Sinbad movies, especially The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad from 1958. It's the epitome of classic fantasies, blending that epic tone with an Arabic adventure at sea. When the Princess Parissa is shrunken by an evil wizard, Sinbad must undertake a quest to an island of monsters to cure her and prevent a war between two kingdoms. Some of the claymation creatures in this movie are so mesmerizing and awesome. A great way to discover more older fantasy films is to search fantasy films by year in Google and Wikipedia. Wikipedia has a great list sorted chronologically by decade. And number three, Legend. If you haven't seen this movie, I suggest you drop everything that you're doing right now and go watch it. Don't even bother watching the rest of this video. Seriously, you'll thank me later. Directed by Ridley Scott, who brought us such movies as Alien and Gladiator, Tom Cruise, who plays essentially a Tarzan of the fantasy forest, and Tim Curry, the Lord of Darkness, absolutely rock this movie as both representatives of the light and the dark. Something really special that I've been promising to show you. The dreams of youth are the regrets of maturity. Set in a realm that cannot get any more whimsical. Seriously, look at all that stuff floating around. One day, Jack and Lily encounter the purest spirits in the world, and everything goes wrong. In a flash, the Lord of Darkness has set in motion his plans to destroy all light in the world and cast it into everlasting darkness. With a music score that could put a dragon to sleep, as tested on my dog, <laughs> This fantasy takes you on a journey through fantastical landscapes, head to head with vile creatures, and one of the most diabolical villains to ever hit the big screen. It's a mashup of fairies, unicorns, magic, elves, goblins, and so much more. And a big shout out to this thing that gave me nightmares for years! <laughs> Na 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 Pretty sure I quote this movie at least once a month. You can fight and you can fight. <laughs> 
I absolutely love this movie and it really is a treasure trove full of adventure. Did I really just say that? And an all around bangerang story. It's definitely my favorite Peter Pan-esque movie. Everywhere you see a rating for this film, it's wrong. Directed by Steven Spielberg, now grown up Peter Pan played by Robin Williams must return to Neverland and rescue his kidnapped children from Captain Hook played by Dustin Hoffman. Don't you dare try to stop me this time, Smee, try to stop me. Smee. But can Peter find that happy thought and reclaim his youthful spirit after being away for so long? With an all-star cast sprouting stellar performances, awesome characters like Rufio, how this movie received such unfavorable reviews from critics really beats me. Math tutor? Pinhead? Prison barber? Muddle lover? Nearsighted gynecologist? You lewd, crude, rude, bag of pre-chewed food dude? <laughs> The themes in this movie are beautiful, it's funny, it's memorable, Neverland is so freaking wicked you want to live there, and it's such a great adventure. If you haven't already seen this movie and given it a chance, please, please do. And number one, it's Willow. Come on, you all knew this was coming. From the mind of George Lucas and directed by Ron Howard with a beautiful music score by James Horner, we follow a reluctant Nell Wynn named Willow Upgood, played by Warwick Davis, who is tasked with protecting a special baby from the evil queen, Bavmorda. This movie is heartwarming, it's funny, it's magical, it takes you on an adventure, and there are so many elements to this movie that keep you engaged and entertained, from Val Kilmer's performance as Mad Mardigan, all the way to Burgle Cut. Death Dogs, Two-Headed Dragons, Val Kilmer, Brownies, Fairies, Val Kilmer. What doesn't this movie have? I'll throw it at you and turn you to stone. Ooh, I'm really scared. There's a, a pack here with an acorn pointed at me! This movie really opened the door for the modern fantasy genre, and yes, it's criticized a lot for essentially being a watered-down Lord of the Rings, and it didn't do so well at the box office as Lucas and Howard had hoped it would do, but if you love fantasy movies and haven't seen this yet, please, please give this movie a try. So I hope you all enjoyed this list of 10 underrated fantasy films, and in the comments down below, please let me know some fantasy films that are your personal favorites and you feel deserve some more love. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I come with new videos every week. Come check me out on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you guys so much for watching and stay legendary.